one minute. We'll give folks one more minute to arrive. Good to see you tonight. All right. Well, once again, welcome to our first business meeting uh, or um, orient. What do we call them, Chris? Uh, informational meeting for our 2022 Northwestern Minnesota Senate Assembly. Thank you for agreeing to serve as your Congress as a voting member to our Senate Assembly. Um, it's uh, it's really an important role as we come together as God's people in this particular expression of the church um, that we call synod. Synod is a Greek word that means on the road together. And that's what we are. Uh, although we're 223 worshiping communities in, in um, many different communities across the state, 90,000 people approximately, uh, we are on this road together. Uh, and this is one of the ways that we traverse that road is by coming together in our in our synod assembly each year and uh, worshiping together and conducting the work that we're called to do as synod and for this particular moment. So I just want to begin with a, a brief devotion that's based on our theme. Our theme for this year's synod assembly is all for love that God's way may be known upon earth. And before I delve into that, I have a question for you. I just something for you to think about for just a few minutes. And, you, and you, could, you can also raise your hand. Raise your hand if in the last, oh, let's say couple of weeks, you have prayed to God for some kind of blessing, whether that be healing or, or in, any kind of blessing at all. If in the last two weeks you've done that, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of you did that. Probably all of us in one way or another, have prayed for a blessing from God. Here's a question I, I want to invite you to consider. Think about why you asked for that blessing. What was your purpose in seeking that blessing? Think about that for a moment. You prayed for some kind of blessing. And why did you do that? What was your intent? Now, as you think about that, I invite you to listen to this psalm, which is the psalm appointed for this Sunday. The psalmist prays for blessing. Listen to the psalmist's intent, why the psalmist is praying for blessing. From Psalm 67, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere God. And I'll say that first section one more time. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Well, if you're like me, you probably didn't answer that the reason you prayed for blessing 
was so that God's way may be known upon earth. But that's why the psalmist prays for blessing. And when you think about it, when, you, when we really drill down deep to why it is we seek um, blessings of peace and healing and conflict resolution, it really is, I think, as God's people, that the way of Christ, God's way, may be made known upon the earth. And I think about this abundant blessing that the psalmist envisions that happens when God's way is made known upon the earth. I'm reminded of the prayer that we pray over uh, people when they're baptized and sometimes at their confirmation as well. It's the prayer for the Holy Spirit, and it goes like this. We pray, for, we pray to God um, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. It's a particular kind of blessing that we pray for. And if you think about each one of those gifts of the spirit that we ask for in that blessing, um, it's easy to imagine how our world would be transformed were it the case that all of us carried with us this blessing of the spirit not just all of us, but everyone, that God's way may, would be made known upon earth. When I sit with parents um, before a baptism, as they, I invite them to think about this, that imagine now, I, I, I share with them the bad news first, okay? The bad news is that the life of a parent is this lifelong and somewhat agonizing process of releasing your child into the world. It begins in agony with the pangs of childbirth, and it continues um, with uh, all the milestones that are both that are sweet and also bitter, like the first day of daycare or the first day of kindergarten, and then you know graduation from preschool and uh, and and graduation from high school, and I you know all of those that slow release into the world. And I ask parents to think that that moment now when they're standing in the road and they're waving goodbye to their child as they head off to college or maybe to work or perhaps to war. That if they knew for sure that they had this blessing that we pray for in holy baptism, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, O oh God both now and forever. Amen. That indeed would be a reassurance to know that we are blessed in this way. And so we are. And that's why we gather. We're drawn together by the Spirit. And we gather to advance this mission that God's way would be made known upon earth. It's the Old Testament version of the mission that Jesus gave us in the book of Matthew. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, that God's way may be known upon earth, all for love. That's the theme of this year's assembly. So I'm delighted that you'll be joining us this year. We're going to walk through some of the assembly business uh, that is coming. We don't have a lot of business for this year's assembly. Um, just one resolution and a budget and a couple of election ballots is all we have. But we'll walk through those so that you can uh, be well informed and ask any questions. Now, if you have questions, um, you can raise your hand using the, um, the, the raise your hand feature. You could get there by going to maybe we uh, if you go to reactions around the bottom, you can raise your hand there. Or you can um, wave your hands wildly. And um, if none of those things work, just unmute yourself and, and shout it out, okay? Now I'm gonna invite the rest of our staff and uh, our key leaders uh, to introduce themselves who are also on this call. And I'm gonna start with our, uh, I'm gonna ask that we start with our uh, chairperson for the Senate Assembly and also our secretary for our uh, council uh, Julie Wilson. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, like Bishop Bill said, my name is Julie Wilson, and I bring greetings on behalf of our Synod planning team, and thank you for tuning in. And I'll be back with some more information, but we'll let others introduce themselves first. And our Synod Vice President is with us this evening, Sharon Josephson. Sharon, will you introduce yourself? Well, I'm here. Uh, I'm Sharon Josephson. I'm the Vice President of the Synod. My major responsibility is to make sure that the Synod Council meets in a timely fashion and meets in a timely way. And so uh, we do not have a lot of business, but hopefully we'll have a lot of fellowship during this assembly. So thank you for all joining tonight. And also to, with us tonight and, and running our meeting and uh, doing um, playing the function of the man behind the curtain, in this case, the woman behind the curtain, <laughs> is Chris Dernier, our Director of Communications. Chris? Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Dernier, and I get to be the Director for Communications, Events, and Youth Ministry in our Synod. And in that, I get to be the Assembly Manager. So you'll be getting a couple of emails from me this next week. And please email me if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks for being with us today. And I know that our, our new-ish, new-ish um, uh, Synod Associate to the Bishop for Synod Administration is on the call tonight here, uh, Pastor Janelle Netlin. Janelle? Hello, church. I'm coming to you from Bemidji, Minnesota, my home office. And I missed virtual synod assembly last year when I was a pastor. I was on sabbatical. And so I'm looking forward to experiencing it this way and uh, being with you virtually on Saturday. But again, I'll be uh, with Chris behind the scenes trying to help answer any questions you might have. And we'll get through this together. We'll walk together uh, through this assembly. Great to be with you. Thank you. And another new-ish staff person um, who serves as our uh, financial and data system specialist, Joan Mellibrook. Joan, will you introduce yourself or just say hello? Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Joan Mellibrook. And as Bishop Bill said, I'm the financial and data system specialist. Um, and I'm helping fill in a little bit for our synod treasurer this evening who ended up with um, a ruptured appendix. And so um, prayers for him. And I'm going to help answer questions the best I can on the budget. And I also joined Pastor Janelle working out of my home office in Bemidji. Thanks, Joan. And I'm coming to you tonight from my home in Detroit Lakes, where the guys are putting in the docks as we speak. And about three weeks later than we thought, maybe even a month. But oh, well, here we are. So um, let's uh, let's see, Chris. What's up next? I think uh, I think it's Julie. I think I'm up next. Yeah, go for it. Awesome. Well, welcome. Uh, one of the joys is that you all get to be joining us from wherever you are, and so thankful for technology. We also know that there's also going to be some bumps along the way with technology. So we thank you for your patience, and um, as others have said, reach out if you do have questions or concerns. We will be uh, signing on from Zoom, just like you did tonight. You will receive an email from Chris uh, tomorrow or early this week with the info for next Friday and Saturday's assembly. Tomorrow, we have another one of these meetings and it's the exact same info that you are at tonight. So you do not need to sign on tomorrow at one o'clock. That is just another time for folks to get info. Two really important things, as we said, um, there's gonna be many more people on next weekend. And so being on mute helps in uh, to control some of the, the background noise. And so if you have a red line through the little microphone, that means you are muted and that's what we would like. And so um, you can click on that. You all have done a great job. Um, the other thing that I would love is that we want to know who you are, not that you're iPad 14. Um, so we would love to know your names. And so I'm going to teach you right now how to change your names. Um, I want to give a shout out to um, Diane and Kathy. Thank you for putting both of your names on there. Um, I was just going through. If you're on a desktop, you're going to go to in your little screen on Zoom, in your specific one, you're going to hover over that, you're going to see three dots. 
Um, and so if you click on that, it'll ask you to re look for rename. And if you will put the names of those that are attending. So I see a couple of you um, have multiple people in your screen. If you'll just let us know who you are so that we can make sure for our records that we have um, people are here. If you're on a phone or an iPad, I believe it should be in the bottom right hand corner, but you want to look for those three dots um, and then look for the word rename. And if you'll change it to your first um, and last name or close to that so we can uh, know who you are. That will be, it should stay. If you guys change it tonight, it should stay, but I'll remind you of, again of that for next week. Um, Yes, again, uh, we are so grateful you're tuning in. Um, Chris is gonna walk you through the website, but all of the information that you should need is on there. Um, and we are praying for you and for our time together next week. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you to those of you who have changed your names. Um, this year, if you were at Synod Assembly last year, we had this double registration feature. Um, and it was kind of confusing. Um, and so this year we are, I'm just going to send you the link, but we need to make sure that your names are on there because you're going to be put into a waiting room. So you're going to click on that link that I'll send you tomorrow afternoon and I'll send it again on Friday as a reminder, but um, you'll need to click on that link and for us to let you in your name needs to be on on your zoom so at least first name and last initial but first and last name like it's in the on your registration um is the most helpful because that's how we're going to keep good order um in as pastor janelle says the great living room in the sky um and so uh, um first and last name is the most helpful Thank you for that. I'm going to walk you through a few things on our Synod website. I'm going to, oh, I see a hand raise. I'm going to wait. Sharon, were you, you can unmute if you have a question. No, no question? Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Um, that's, you know, we have these meetings to get kind of used to it. So Chris, I see Sharon has a question. Sharon's iPad. Well, no, she, she shook her head. No. Oh, okay. She Sorry does it. So Sharon, what you can do is go to your reactions and it will say lower hand, and then you can lower your hand. There should be a reactions tab towards the bottom, um, of your screen. I believe it's there, right? Julian iPad on the bottom. All right, so I'm going to share my screen with you and show you our Synod's website. So here's our lovely Synod website. And when you first go onto it, I've been on it for a while. So the scrolling banner, the first one you will see, if I get to it there, is our assembly banner for our 2022 virtual synod assembly. You can give that a click and it will take you. Um, Deacon Julie, you can see this, the new web page, right? Okay. Um, so this will bring you to what you need. Um, if you want to read the cover letter, um, we will have worship as part of assembly. It's here in the bulletin. It's actually at the end of the handbook as well. Um, so the two big things I want to walk through tonight briefly is the business page in the handbook. I'm going to start with the handbook. It is 25 pages of information that will help you next weekend. I'm not going to talk through all of it, but just to lift up a few things. So um, we have letters of greetings from Bishop Phil and Bishop Eaton. We, you can read a little bit about our keynote speaker and our churchwide rep. Um, here's a link to the Synod website um, and a rough draft of the schedule for both Friday, which is an orientation time and Saturday. We will be receiving an, a Synod Assembly offering um, and we will talk about that more here in a little bit. 
there is worship. Um, if you are having issues during the assembly, there's a phone number you can call for tech help. No one will be here at the Synod office. I'm at the Synod office tonight, um, but no one will be here during the assembly. We're actually going to be at the TV studio at Concordia in the Olin building. And so if you call the Synod office, no one will be able to get back to you. Um, some voter member responsibilities, some good things to read through, rules and procedures, guidelines, Zoom etiquette, um, and some business items. Um, and you made it to this, so great job. And then just some information about the Synod staff. Um, sometimes in the church, we use terms that not everybody knows. Um, and so we have a little um, glossary of ELCA terms and Synod terms and leadership terms to help you through that. And then we have the opening worship. Um, one thing, um, will be different. So if you've already printed off everything, way to be on top of it, but there will be one change to the agenda. I'm, there's a ballot that's um, been added tonight. So that will be put on the agenda as part of the, um, the elections. So um, that is different, but I will include that in some emails um, that I sent out this next week. I will try not to send you too many emails, just important information. The other piece I wanted to lift up briefly is this business tab. And in here is um, your schedule, synod report. So in here you'll find um, Bishop Bill's report. He'll be doing a live report during the assembly that will be different than this written report. And then each synod staff um, person did a report and you can find those here. And then um, partner reports. So if you want to read about um, some of our partners in ministry, you can read their year end reports. Um, business, this is the things that we are going to vote on. So we have last year's minutes, rules and procedures. This will be all part of the consent agenda. The financials, elections and our one resolution. Um, and since Synod Assembly is um, virtual, some of the rules are a little different. And so I'm gonna call on Bishop Bill to talk about that. And let me, do you want to share or should I? Yes, please, uh, I, I'll, I'd like to share my screen. Well, okay, everyone. So uh, one of the first things that we will do after worshiping together as, as, the, as the expression of the church known as synod when we come together at synod assembly on Saturday is um, after worship, uh, we'll call the meeting to order and then we'll vote on in block on several items and included in that are the rules of procedure or the rules of the assembly. We always begin our meetings um, with uh, those that are conducted under Robert's Rules of Order by approving the rules. Now, if you don't like the rules, you can make a motion that, the, that they be pulled out of in block and we can, we can um, uh, have discussion uh, around changing the rules. Um, and uh, if you do that, that's, uh, that's certainly your prerogative. But the rules are um, similar to those that we had last year, except this year we've made just a few small changes. And I'm going to share my screen here with you. Um, there it is. So can you all see that? OK. So this is um, the, the, the rules for procedure are pretty standard from assembly to assembly. This is the substantive changes to the rules. So um, one of the one of the things is that other than other than voting to change the rules, which is all, always has to be uh, allowed, there are only procedure procedural motions will be allowed on the day of assembly. You can make other motions. Uh, you can propose um, revisions to the budget and to 
the um, and to the resolution for compensation guidelines, et cetera. You can you can make all of those motions, but you have to do it. They have to be submitted to us by noon on Wednesday of May 18th at the at this uh, address here. And this, by the way, this document along with the rules is in your is in the uh, web page that Chris just showed you. So you would send an email if you wanted to offer a motion, uh, other than a procedural one mentioned here on the day of, you would have to do that by when, noon on Wednesday, May 18th. Same for nominations. If you'd like to make nominations from the floor, you may do so, but again, those must be received by noon on Wednesday of May 18th. Um, again, once again, unless you move to change the rules on the day of the assembly. Um, same with revisions to the budget. Um, so when we do, when re, I'm sorry, revisions to the budget, same rule, um, noon, Wednesday, May 18th. Now, uh, when we have debate on main motions, um, whether that is the, we only have a few items of business, but there, there will be, I'm sure, people speaking to them, we will limit debate to 12 minutes or approximately six speakers, unless one of you were to move to suspend the rules in order to be able to extend debate. And that's possible um, because one of the procedural motions allowed is to motion to suspend or revise the rules. If you would like to obtain the floor to speak, you'll send a private chat message. And I'm going to show, I'm going to, after, after we um, go through the rules here, I'll ask Chris uh, to show you how to do a private chat message. You'll send a private chat message to the person whose name will be moderator for the day. And you'll state your name, your congregation, and your reason for obtaining the floor. Now, um, there are just a few reasons why you'd want to ob obtain the floor. You might want to speak for or against a motion. You may wish to uh, call for a point of order, uh, which is a way of saying, um, I don't, I think we're out of order here. I think we need to get on with the agenda kind of thing. Or uh, you can make a motion to suspend the rules um, and uh, extend debate. Um, so those would be your main, and you can also ask a question. So those are your main reasons for obtaining the floor it would be to ask a question, one that you think everyone would benefit from hearing the answer to. You know, that would be, um, you know, otherwise you could just simply send a question to the moderator in the chat feature. But if you have a question that you think will clarify matters for the whole assembly, then you can certainly obtain the floor and ask the question, or you can obtain the floor to, um, to uh, speak for or against a motion or to suspend the rules for the day. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and just ask what questions you might have about the rules. Chris, would you, would you um, just talk us through how to send a private message in chat? Yeah, so if you're on a computer, um, you can go to, the, the way I find it easiest is to click on participants and then um, at the bottom of the screen, and then you can go over and then, and I am going to share my screen and just show you how this looks. All right, so, oh, do share. Oh, never mind. So, and then I'm gonna go to Joan and I'm gonna click on the three buttons next to her and I'm gonna hit chat. And then I can send Joan a chat. Can you see that, Julie? Nope, we just oh, see the web page still. Okay. I don't think we can see the Zoom. Never mind. Okay, sorry. I, was I think you to have helpful. to, if you share your desktop, Chris, I think you'd be, okay. but it's a- um, So we, could, we will, um, if you hover on someone and get those three dots, a, a um, no, in the participants, go to the more and then send them a chat. The moderator will be a co-host. 
So they will be near the top of the participants list. Um, also, you can click on the chat at the bottom of the screen. Um, and then you can choose someone to send a chat to. It would say everyone in the meeting or there's a scroll and you can type in moderator. So the moderator, oh, I got a hello. Thank you. Um, so um, that is that. And we will, if you have problems during the Senate assembly with the private chat, please contact that tech helpline as well. Um, so for a lot of the things, there will be some chatting during the non-business part that is for everyone, but during the things that we are voting on, um, there will be a chat. You'll need to send the moderator a private chat to obtain the floor. Um, please don't send that to everyone because of the way the rules is we need um, like people for and against and all of that. So private chat, the moderator or um, chat everyone if it's not about something you're voting on. I hope that's helpful. Thanks, Chris. I'm just going to turn it over to Vice President Sharon Josephson, who's going to talk a little bit about the consent agenda, one of the first items of business at the assembly on Saturday. Yes, if you notice on your agenda, we'll first have worship, then we will call the Senate Assembly officially to order. And then the next item of business will be the report of the Credentials Committee. And that will be done once again, uh, virtually, electronically, we will be able to determine at that point if we have the correct number of people to proceed. Then the first item of business, and this is the item of business that you will have to vote on, is something called the consent agenda. And in our, in our tradition here, the three items that we have that we vote on as one item is first of all, the agenda for the Senate Assembly. And all of you will have received that or have received that already. The second one is the rules of procedure for the assembly that Bishop Bill just went through with you. The important things there to note are the deadlines for making changes to any of the resolutions or any of the kinds of activities that we'll be voting on, nominations for elective office and so forth. And then the third item will be the minutes from the 2021 Senate Assembly. We are going to have one motion. It'll be coming from, uh, it'll be coming from the Senate Council. And so we'll need a second. And then after that, you will be asked to vote. And that'll be a virtual vote. And Chris will explain how we're going to be doing that. And you will even get a chance to practice that. And then after that, we'll be pretty much going through the agenda the way it's listed. The items that we're going to have to have discussion on, if there is any discussion, the items that we're going to be voting on, we know will be the compensation guidelines that are under resolution one. And we anticipate that there will be some discussion, maybe this evening, but hopefully next Saturday as well. And you will have a vote, once again, a virtual vote on that. And then there will be financials that we will have to look at, and then also the election. So you could have a minimum of four times that you're going to vote. It could be more. And if at any point during the assembly, you think, well, maybe we need to have some questions, then do use those motions of privilege, the point of information, the motion to suspend the rules. If you want to continue discussing something more or you have an other item that you want to bring up, those are the kinds of procedural motions that you can use. If you have questions about that, do a chat. That means a little message for those of you who don't understand. I don't understand what chat means. That means I should talk to uh, my grandson, I guess. But you, when you're talking about a chat in an assembly like this, it means send a message to the moderator that says, I need more information. And then we can, we can deal with that issue privately. And if it's something that you want it to change into a motion, we can also do that. But we're here to help you. And do remember last Senate Assembly was the first time we tried it. And it worked out very well. Thanks in a great part to Chris 
and to Julie and Bishop Bill, but most importantly, Concordia College, because without Concordia College, it would have been an entirely different experience. And I don't think we realize how fortunate we are in this synod to have the kind of staff and the kind of educational institution that we have that are here to help us. So if you have any questions, uh, I will be around all day on Saturday, sitting beside Bishop Bill. And if you wanna chat with me, you can try, but I can't guarantee I'll answer you, okay? <laughs> You'll have to send a verbal message and someone will come and talk to me. So, okay, thank you so much for being here. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask them tonight. Any questions of discussion, ask them tonight. Thank you, Sharon. We're gonna move on to the first item of business that we'll be taking up at assembly, which is the one resolution that will be before us. And that's the resolution for the 2024 compensation guidelines, 2023, I'm sorry, compensation guidelines. So Chris is gonna show us a video but while she gets that ready, I'll just say a couple of things about the guidelines. First, um, there's been just one change and one clarification. So the change is that is the, uh, the, the change that we see every year, which is the cost of living adjustment. And the cost of living adjustment for this year that's being proposed is a hefty one, 6%. And uh, if that takes your breath away, it takes mine away too as does 8.1% inflation that we're experiencing right now. Um, by the time, I would invite you just to consider that by the time these compensation guidelines go into effect, which won't be until 2023, we'll have had more than a year of close to double digit inflation. Um, the, both the Department of Defense and the Social Security Administration um, put in a 6% or 5.9% increase this last year, and I'm sure they'll see something similar this year. So in order to keep our rostered ministers up uh, to uh, somewhat uh, with the cost of living, we're proposing a fairly hefty increase for the cost of living adjustment. Um, and then the one clarification is for just uh, no change to the um, parental leave policy but just a clarification on what we mean by parental leave, because we had some pastors on parental leave this last year, and there, there were questions that were raised by their congregations and by the pastors. Um, and so we thought it would be useful to simply provide a paragraph explaining what parental leave is and how to plan for it. So um, the, uh, the, the resolution is a resolution to approve five to approve the compensation guidelines. And then it refers to five exhibits or five documents. And those five documents are um, a, uh, uh, two documents for pastors, one with and one without parsonages, compensation guidelines, and then two compensation guideline documents for deacons, one with, one without parsonages, and then one compensation guideline for some synod authorized ministers. So uh, um, two things, um, there's also a lay leader uh, yeah. professionally, and then the word and service deacons, they don't have a parsonage one. Right, that's right. Yep, you're right. Thank um, you. so. A couple of people have private chatted me, thank you for that, about voting. And I'm so sorry that we haven't told you how we're going to vote. Um, we're going to practice voting on... Friday night at the orientation, but um, what we did last year, and it seemed to work really well, is um, we will do a Zoom poll, and it will pop up on your screen, and you will um, respond in real time. If um, our Vice President Sharon, along with Bishop Bill, deem it too close to call, um, because some people are sharing computers and whatnot, um, then we will email a ballot to each of the emails we have. So that's why I sent out that email on Friday to each person to make sure that that was the right email address. So if um, something we're voting on is too close, then an email will be sent um, and then you'll respond to that and we'll, we'll get those results. 
all of the voting happens before a break or before something that takes a lot of time on the agenda. So there will be time for that voting if necessary. So sorry to interrupt Bishop Bill. Do you, should I show that video? Okay. Yes, thank you. Welcome to Synod Assembly. My name is Kayla Billings and I currently serve as a pastor at First Lutheran Church in Bemidji. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about what you can expect to see in the 2020-13 Synod Guidelines. The first thing that we'd like to bring to your attention is not a change, but just a piece where we have offered some clarification. The family leave policy has often left many questions about what exactly family leave is. So family leave is something that is given to all rostered leaders as well as church professionals with the understanding that this time is to be used to care for either a newborn child or a newly adopted child. During this time, the employee or rostered leader is to continue to receive both full benefits as well as full pay in order to care for this newborn or newly adopted child. What this means is that as this rostered leader or church leader is on leave, they are to be released from all work-related duties and responsibilities. So it is important that prior to family leave taking place, backups are put in place to handle both the regularly scheduled events such as worship or teaching, as well as anything that may be emergent, such as hospital visits or funerals. The other thing we would like to bring to your attention is the cost of living increase. As you all know, 2021 and 2022 brought with it significant increases in inflation. Because our Senate compensation guidelines are often something that address what we have experienced in the past, this year you will notice that there is a 6% recommended increase. You may be wondering how we came up with that 6%. The 6% comes because the Social Security Administration also offered a 5.9% increase to all of those who received we know that this is a large jump, but we also know that there has been some standstill and some makeup to be done as a result of COVID. And so we hope that you will join us in seeing this as accurate given the times, recognizing that we don't yet know what 2022 and 2023 will hold, but that we are trying to get caught up with what we have experienced in the last two years. We appreciate you taking the time to look into these compensation guidelines and encourage you to reach out if you have any questions about anything that lies with it. Thank you for your time. Hello, John Lisa here. I'm one of the campus ministers at Concordia College, and I'm a deacon of the Synod. And I also serve on our Synod's Compensation Guidelines Committee. And as a committee, we decided that it might be helpful to review the big changes that were proposed and approved for our Compensation Guidelines for Deacons or ministers of word and service at last year's Synod Assembly. If you can recall the compensation guidelines for deacons that we had previous to last year, you'll recall that they were quite general. In other words, they uh, covered wide ranges of years of experience and proposed wide ranges of base salaries in response to those years of service. So in order to make our guidelines more specific, more helpful, and also more equitable, we shifted that format to be parallel to the format for our Synod's guidelines for pastors. Uh, in other words, there's a table and you read the table, you look at years served since original consecration or ordination, and then um, highest degree earned, and that will lead you to a minimal base salary. You take that minimal base salary, and on top of that, you add based on years of relevant work experience pre previous to consecration or ordination. You also add for additional training or education that did not result in an additional degree. And also you can add on top of that, if your deacon is serving in a particular uh, leadership responsibility within that call context. And we also wanted to share with you that we know of at least one synod that has borrowed the format of our guidelines for deacons compensation because they also see in it 
a way to come up with a guideline for compensation that is more helpful, more specific, and more equitable. But just as I shared with you at last year's Synod Assembly, I want to share with you, and especially those of you who are pastors and leaders within church councils or ministry councils, that you are the most helpful advocates for any deacon who is seeking equitable compensation or for whom you want to seek more equitable compensation. Thank you for that advocacy as well. Okay, so I just want would like to pause here and ask if there are any questions or any anything you would like to share regarding this one resolution to approve the 2023 compensation guidelines. Any questions? All right. Well, if you think of one, it's okay to back oh, up. I, I, I do. I have a question. Okay, I, sorry, I couldn't yeah. find my unmute. Go for it. <laughs> uh, Nola here. Um, how come, like, um, how about if pastors, like, say their wife or something has, uh, uh, you know, is found to have cancer and has to be on chemo, so they don't get any um, um, time off through that parental it's strictly parents of child being born or adopted. You don't count anything like that if there's a severe uh, uh, health uh, issue that goes on for the pastor or family or himself. Or the thank you for asking the question. the The family, I believe that the policy is family leave, not just parental leave. So it would, could be used for that. And in those cases, I believe also um, the. Uh, um, pastors or deacons or uh, other employees of the church are could also be offered um, to use some of their own uh, um, accumulated sick leave. But uh, the the family the the leave I believe is family leave. Nola. Okay. Because I'm thinking of a pastor that I know that his wife just was recently found to have stage four cancer. And so I was curious about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, let's move on to the budget for this year. And I'm going to invite Joan Mellibrook to speak to that. Chris, can you share that budget, please? Joan, would you want the budget or the audit report first? Um, the budget. Okay. I don't think the, the audit report is what we're looking at at the moment. Thank you. Um, so as in the past, um, we've got the budget ending um, uh, for 22, then the budget that's built for this year ending 23, and then the preliminary budget ending 24. Now those all sound weird because we're in 2022, but our fiscal year runs from February 1st through January 31st. So hence, we just finished our 22 budget this last January. Now we're on the 23 budget this year. And what we've put forth is the preliminary budget um, for 24. Um, so you have to think differently, even though we say we're in 22, it's budget year, fiscal year 23. Um, so, as you look, uh, scroll to the bottom of 22, the budget said for 22, fiscal year 22, that we would end uh, $25,000 ahead. We actually ended $8,700 ahead. You will see fiscal year 23 um, with a deficit of $50,227. 
in fiscal year 22, we did not need the PPP money. So we are moving that to fiscal year 23 to this year. So the deficit really is only going to be $227 is what we're projecting. Um, if we move over to fiscal year 24, um, we are looking at, um, a, we are also proposing 6% increase for synod staff. Um, and the deficit right now that we're looking at is $5,200. Um, there's a five, a little over a 5% increase in revenue projected for 24. Um, some pieces are going to go down percentage wise, um, but obviously we're looking at compensation going up 6%. Um, so right now we're looking at a proposed deficit for fiscal year 24 preliminary budget of $5,200. Um, Diane looks like... It's Kathy. Kathy, Hi. I'm sorry. That's okay. All right. Um, you know, you go from one thing to another and we've got this big book of things. Can you tell us page numbers or something so we can find these documents? Can, can you see this one on the screen that she has? I can't find it. That would be under the financial report. I don't think that's, that's actually in the book, is it, Chris? No, the financial report is not in the handbook. It's on the website on oh. the business page. So. The handbook is more of a guide. It doesn't have the business in it because some of the business is still changing um, as of today. And so um, that wasn't quite ready for the handbook. So this information, there's links um, in the handbook or go to the website. Um, but I put in the chat to everyone the direct link for what I'm showing on the screen right now. So. And I will, um, in the email I send out tomorrow, I'll do some direct links at the things that we're voting on so that you can just click on it and get to it easily. Oh, that would be so helpful because it seems like you're talking and we're not listening because we're trying to find it in the book and we have no idea where it is. Yeah. And that, um, yep, the handbook is more to like set the stage and then. I'll send out an email with the direct links um, for each thing that you'll need to vote on. Chris, could you just, before we move forward here with the budget, could you just show us one more time where to find these documents on the web page so that people can do it yet tonight if they want to? Yeah, I just, I don't want to stop um, Joan if we're not. Sure. You can, you can stop this for now. That's yeah. fine. Thanks. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to this. Just, just okay. refresh my memory on how to get there so people can get there. I had a question too. Oops. Go ahead. Yeah, how come they didn't use their PPE monies? Um, we were actually, at, because we were ahead, um, we were gonna have a, a positive uh, year end in 22. They chose to, the Senate Council chose to move it over to fiscal year 23. When we okay, were- that, 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 that was the money that you received because of the, uh, of the COVID pandemic, correct? Correct, correct. Uh, all right, thank you. You're welcome. And, and just so you know, Nola and the rest of you, we have documentation that those funds were used to uh, underwrite supplement. No, it's not supplement, it's to underwrite the salaries of the individuals that we kept because that's what we promised to do when we received those dollars is to keep our staff intact and not have to lay anyone off or terminate anyone. And we did do that. Our problem is one of documentation once again. And so at this point we're documenting, so we will have that, those funds off the books by the time we get to the, next, to the next year, which will be the end of January this next year. It's terribly confusing, but 
Um, I've asked the question many times, just like you, Nola, and mm -hmm. we have this according to our auditors and everyone else figured out. Okay, well, I'm a newbie here for this, so that's, I, I was used to being in the Southwest Senate, so I... <laughs> that's right. And the I'm other sorry, thing I would suggest is when you have a document like this budget, when it's a one-page document, I would, Diane and Kathy, take the time to print that out so that you have it in your hand so you can actually physically touch it because that's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you have to go back and forth to the website. And yeah. maybe... When we get back to a normal Senate assembly, we will have documents printed out again. However, I'm not sure if we'll ever go back to an exclusively paper kind of report that we've had in the past. So thank you. Thank you. Um, you these documents can be um, your churches. Uh, some churches I know will print off this information for their voting members too. So reach out to your congregation um, to have you to get the paper copies if you need some. So I'm going to share my screen once again um, and walk through. Oh, I here. Um, the here I have the wrong thing open now. So. Our Synod webpage is nwmnsynod.org. Um, the W and the E are very close and our friends over at the Northeast Minnesota Synod already had their assembly. So that website won't help you very much. So make sure you're at the Northwestern Minnesota Synod. Click on this first banner, the Virtual Synod Assembly, and it will bring you to this page. And so it gives some basic information. Um, the handbook, some of you already have. Um, we sent a paper copy to each congregation last week, one paper copy. Um, and that's kind of a primer of some Robert's rules, uh, schedule, worship, and those things. The most important pieces that we're voting on is found on this business link. You'll click on that link and it will bring you to this page, right? So then there's the schedule, synod reports, partner reports, synod assembly videos, that's this um, event will live there as well as a Zoom primer is on there. Um, and then business, things to vote on. I aptly named it so you can find it easily. On here, you'll find the minutes, the rules and procedures, and then that the um, sheet that Bishop Bill shared of the major changes. And then we have this link of the financials and I'm gonna click on that. That's where we were just, um, the budget comparison report for Senate Assembly 2022. Here's the audit report. Um, if you want to see more details, I think it's like a 25 page document. Um, so I wouldn't print out the whole thing if you care about the earth, but like if you're a numbers person, go for it. There's some important information in there, but um, make sure you look at the audit report. I'm going to go back and then we have the election information. So we have, we're voting on two ballots, a Synod Council ballot and a Synod Consultation Committee ballot. Um, and then to learn a little bit about the people um, being um, lifted up as nominees for Synod Council, you can read a little bit about that information there. You don't need to print off the ballot since the voting will be online, um, but I just made them look like ballots because, you know, why not make them look like ballots? And then down here, the, um, we have the information that you need for the resolution, the compensation, the resolution for the compensation guidelines. This is what will be voted on. And then we have the six documents that Bishop Bill spoke to right here. The without parsonage, with parsonage, deacons, stands, and lay church workers. And then since we are gonna practice voting on Friday evening, we have a fake resolution 
and it will be taken semi-seriously. Um, but this is a resolution on comic heroes. I was the author. Um, and we will walk through this like it was Saturday so we can practice. Um, so here is the information again. Northwestern Minnesota Synod homepage, click the banner, click on business, and you'll find what you need. Thank you, Chris. I, that's helpful to go over that one more time. So now, uh, Joan, would you um, walk us, any, anything more you want to share about the budget? Um, no, not at the moment. Um, unless people have some questions that they would like, I could do my best to answer those. If there's any questions about this. I know if our treasurer, Chris, were here and we uh, were praying for <laughs> recovery, he would share a couple of things that the Senate has performed quite well financially over the last couple of years. Um, mission support has grown. We've managed to control expenses. And so an illustration of that is last year, we, we finished the year at about even, but we had about $80,000 in transfers out of restricted funds that we didn't use in our budget. So had we used those, we would have finished the year stronger. But by retaining that, those earnings in our restricted funds, it gives us some more flexibility to, in the future to be able to um, focus on some of the new initiatives and in our strategic plan, things like that. So, um, and so that's, uh, that was last year and the coming years. Um, you will see that there's a slight deficit budget that's being proposed but we feel pretty confident in our ability to control expenses to bring those um, those budgets either to you know to even or or to perhaps some retaining some earnings. So um, the people of the Northwestern Minnesota Synod continue to be amazingly generous in their response to God's love and and God's mercy in their congregations and congregations continue to be generous in sharing some of that through mission support. And so thank you for that. Lastly, I want to just share a little bit about uh, the amazing speakers uh, who we're having at our Synod Assembly this year. Um, we're, uh, we're really blessed to have Caitlin Curtis, who is an author and a speaker um, about, uh, well, in, in, uh, in 2020 on Thanksgiving Day, we launched a book study that continued from uh, on through Thanksgiving on one of Caitlin Curtis's books called Native. And uh, she's a Christian uh, member of the Potawatomi uh, Citizen Nation and is uh, shares about her lifelong um, journey of, of figuring out what it means to be both Christian and an indigenous person at the same time. Very relevant to our context here where we have indigenous neighbors all around us and in this place where we live, which was, is the uh, homeland of the Anishinaabe and Ojibwe uh, people. And so um, we're really excited to hear her. We'll have opportunity to hear her speak and uh, for some Q&A. And then Sarah Cutter, who's the Director of Operations for the ELCA, Pastor Sarah Cutter, will be the uh, speaker uh, bringing the, bringing the uh, churchwide uh, report um, from, from our churchwide organization. And uh, Pastor Cutter is an outstanding leader. Uh, she's relatively new in this role and has been doing a great job, I think. So I'm excited to hear from her too. That's all of our business for tonight. Um, I, I, I would just note that I did uh, drop in the chat a correction to my previous answer to NOLA around sick leave. It's actually handled in a different way. So um, it's uh, sick leave, uh, caring for, for family members is covered under the sick leave policy, not under the family leave policy in our Synod guidelines, but there is provision for that. Okay, so Bishop, last, Bell, yes. Bishop, before, we, before you close, one thing I'd like to put in perspective for all of you on the call tonight is that last year, the Synod Assembly took a lot of courageous steps they approved a strategic plan that not only lasts for one year, but it's over the scope of many years. They also passed some resolutions that made some significant changes in training 
opportunities and responsibilities for our professional staff and for our lay leaders. And so this Senate Assembly, instead of taking some of those bold actions, is going to be here to hear the reports on what has happened over the year. And so what you have to do is bring that back to your local congregations so they understand that what happens in Synod Assembly really does make a difference. And so that's gonna be your responsibility to listen carefully, to discern, to see if what happened last year is actually making an impact, if we've actually done anything. I can let you know that the resolution we passed about doing a racial, equity last year and training for our professional staff has been now replicated in other synods throughout the country. So what we're doing here, not only in our, our deacon uh, schedule for salary is also making an impact. So ask questions, discern, uh, be thoughtful because we're being watched not only by our local congregations, by other people throughout the country. So thank you. Uh, spend your time this week looking at those reports and going forward next Saturday. So Bishop Bill. Thanks so much, Sharon, and thanks for that refocus. You're so good at that, at helping us remember the main thing. And it's true, we did uh, make, last year's business was very robust and the big, lots of uh, major resolutions and of course our strategic plan if you read my report and our staff reports, you'll see lots of reporting on progress um, in our strategic plan in the last year, and, and my uh, spoken remarks will reference that as well. So looking forward to that. So um, one final thing before we wrap up tonight, our Synod, Assembly, our, our Synod Assembly offering is a continuation of our Easter appeal as it was last year. Um, this year, our offering goes towards uh, 50% towards Lutheran disaster responses, efforts in Eastern Europe and the Ukraine, and 50% to be used as direct grants to congregations for their own poverty ministries, ministries people for people with housing insecurity or food insecurity, um, whether those be existing or brand new, there'll be grant money available to you to use in your congregations for those needs. So um, I believe that it's, we're going to see some needs across our region if we continue to have the kind of spring that it looks like we're having and we'll have uh, families, farm families in particular, who can't get their crops in the field. We're, we're praying for uh, a break in the rain uh, and for an opportunity here for our farmers to get out in the field. Um, but it's, it's uh, I know they're anxiously awaiting some drying period and uh, so we're praying for them. Um, thank you so much for your, once again, for being willing to serve in this way, in this important way for Synod Assembly. And uh, if you, if, if between now and tomorrow, you, you think of some more questions, by all means, join uh, that meeting. Uh, is that meeting at noon or one tomorrow? I thought I heard two. It's at one o'clock. All right. Join us at one o'clock tomorrow. And uh, we'll, we'll have, a, we'll cover the same business as we did today. But um, if, if you have other questions that you think of, you can, you can sure chime in. So thanks again. I'm gonna close with the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to remain muted and pray along with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.